painting party. This ain't your daddy's painting class. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mary Houlihan. Bitch. Yeah, baby. There's something about Mary. Like yesterday. Yesterday? Yesterday you said you'd call Sears. Another scorcher. Cool. Hi, things from the void. Hi, single walk run. A boo 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 boo. <laughs> There's something about Sears. <laughs> Hello, Emily. Hello, potatoes, molasses. Hello, Void. Hello, Melly. Hello, King Klong. Ready to paint slash <laughs> cry? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know I am. I know I am. Well, folks. Welcome to Mary Houlihan's Painting Party. It's the only show in the world where I paint and you also paint at home. And then you, you know, you have, you have a great time in the chat saying, you know, talking about Sears and stuff and posting little dolphin emojis. And send us your art. We'll screen share it. And... I know a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys are sitting and watching and you're thinking, this is, this is just, this is a plain Jane episode. This is a plain Jane episode. Nothing, nothing special. Wrong. You'd be wrong. You'd be wrong. Because first of all, the theme is the beach. So yeah. Second of all, we have a guest and her name is Kenise Mobley. Hello. Hi. Thank you for having me. Denise. Yes. The streets are talking. Did you Hello. go to the beach? Did you go to the beach? I did go to the beach. I rarely go to the beach, but my family wanted to do a vacation to Cancun. So I went to the beach for seven days and I didn't even commit one murder, not one, oh even goodness. though it was my whole family together in a That's house. That's huge. Yeah, because you would think at least one murder. It's just like one would slide in, but I didn't even do one. And yeah, there were times when I thought about it, but I didn't. Alice says, "Murder free beach vacation." Okay. Yes, Cancun can do. Says Ex butt yes. genitals. Wow. I was at an Airbnb that was not finished. And oh, the that. building had, they were still working on it, I mm -hmm. guess. And, you know, there was a lot of cracks on the walls. But that's just, you know, we were like, this is the beach, man. We're I relaxed. Ooh, yeah. That's a chill vibe. I'm, I'm, that's New Canis. New Canis is a tempting chillness. Ooh. Is this turtle going to be part of it? Yeah, so. Nice. I, I started this turtle. A while ago, I forget what the theme was that day. Possibly this turtle. The theme was this turtle. It could have been turtle. I forget okay. what it was. Maybe it was. Well, whatever it was, turtle fit, and I didn't finish it. So yeah, I got to thinking, and I said, you know what? I've seen plenty of videos of little turtles swimming, well, you know, running on the beach and jumping into the water. Mm -hmm. I've seen it, so I think turtles, I think they count for beach theme. That makes sense. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, that's like where they're born and stuff, right? Or maybe I'm thinking of like sea turtles where like they come out and they just run towards the water. Like, oh, sure. I mean, you don't know anything. Let's they don't face even it. know. There's, there's all yeah. kinds of turtles. But uh, I guess the beach ones, they, they're, they come out of eggs, right? And the eggs mm -hmm. are in the sand. And then they just walk towards the ocean and then they kind of, you know, topple over <laughs> and get swept away. Yeah, they just have to hope that, 
it seems so fascinating that you're born knowing how to walk and intentionally going in one direction. But do you know why? You don't know why. You're just like, I got to walk this way. And then, oh, I'm wet. Right? Did you ever watch, um, do you know where I'm going with this? Did you ever watch Rocco's Modern Life? No. I mean, I know what it is, but I don't think I ever watched it. Now, I want to say there was an episode where Filbert, the turtle. Okay. Um, now, now, folks, folks in the chat, wasn't, wasn't there an episode? I swear there was an episode where he gets, um, almost like, uh, what do you call? Almost like possessed of like, I need to go to the ocean. Oh, wow. I don't really paint, but I am looking through a book that someone gave me that I'm going to be cutting out collage Ooh. stuff from. What's this book? So there's a, a, a guy that, I don't know if we're seeing each other. At any rate, we've gotten some dates. Oh Maybe we'll never speak again. I don't know. But he got me um, this. It's oh. contemporary American art. And it's all in black and white. And it's got some cool patterns. So I'm going to play with some patterns to evoke beach i love that you're in it's complicated maybe i think maybe that's a description of my relationship both to men but also myself so yes mm. do you want um a relation i think i do but i haven't had one so or not a real one i've dated a lot of people for three months and then i think well, I don't need this anymore. Mm -hmm. But it would be nice to like someone for longer than three months. So yeah. yes, I think I would like to be in a relationship. Would, would Are you in a relationship? I am, I am. And do you want to be in a relationship? I do, I, I like this one. I think it's pretty good. We've That's been good. together for a year and a half. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. They've seen lots of different moods. Yeah. So I think it's a pretty good one. I feel like I was in some sort of meh ones previously. Right. I think I was, I'm, I just turned 34. And congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I think in my twenties, I was like, I'm not getting married anytime soon. Uh -huh. So, um, I would date these people that were kind of like, you know, sometimes people are like, what are you doing dating them? You don't even have anything in common with this person. And right. I'm like, hello, passing the time. Yeah. And I don't know. There's pros and cons to passing the time. It goes um, by regardless, but maybe you could be spending true. it on something else. Exactly. And you know, if it if it goes by regardless, maybe in retrospect, it would have been smarter to date um, people that I was more jazzed about. Mm. So anyways, I feel pretty jazzed about this person. We have a lot in common and he's nice. That's important. Mm -hmm. How did you find this person? Oh my God, Kanis. So get this. We met at open mics <gasps> in like 2012. Wow. A long time ago. Yeah. And so when I started doing comedy, he was sort of, he was a little bit on the outs. He had tried for a while and then was like, oh, I don't know. I think I'm too nervous. I don't know if I can really do this. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would just see him over the years at shows or things and you know just bump into randomly you know you're an acquaintance type person you're yeah. like oh i like that person but you kind of don't really know that person you know right. one of those and then i moved to the woods as you can see i can and, this is um, this is your house that you own and there's water nearby yes i guess so I, this is my little cabin and the lake is over there. Yes. And 
So I, I'm in the woods and I go on Tinder and I see this fellow Whoa. and I say, well, that's crazy. Um, I thought maybe it was a glitch. I thought mm -hmm. maybe my location didn't refresh since being in the city or something. Right. And so then I DM'd him and I said, you just showed up as a mile away in the woods. Are you in the woods? Mm -hmm. and, um, and it turns out this is his childhood town. Oh, wow. And so he sort of half moved into his parents' house mm -hmm. to, well, his dad passed away. So That's he moved in and was, you know, helping do house things. Right. And so then we started hanging out and then we were like, wow, we should kiss. Ooh, and you kissed on the mouth. Yes, and we kissed on the mouth. And it's been going well, and it's nice to have, um, you know, a shared understanding of comedy and things that annoy me about comedy, but also things I like about it and things that are fun about it. And, um, but also not feel competitive. Yeah. Um, and he's funny and he writes and stuff. That's and ideal. Lately, lately we've been going to open mics, if you can believe it. Oh, in the city or out in the woods? Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. Are in there the open city. mics near you in the woods? Oh my gosh, interesting you should ask. Um, I believe there are, but I'm too scared to go. A lot of uh, local firehouses, they have the little signs with the letters that you could move around, and a lot of them say, Comedy Night, ho hosted by Danny C. Call Danny C for more info. And part of me is like, I guess I kind of want to... Yeah, you got to call Danny is. C. But I don't know. I'm nervous that I would see... Um, crazy material and yes. then I'd be like oh. <laughs> is Danny a firefighter too it sounds like Danny is but maybe Danny's the one who's doing the sign oh my gosh I'm not sure and I'm sorry I don't have the link immediately available <laughs> but I was telling um a friend this about the Danny C firefighter comedy biz uh -huh. and they were like oh let's look him up and so my friend found um his Facebook page, I think it's called like, quote, Danny C, quote, entertainment or something like that. And he just has like, Why the folks? <laughs> Was he not really well, you know, Danny he's C? like a boomer. He's a Danny boomer. Danny C, so he, okay. <laughs> so he types like that. Gotcha. So he has, you know, Facebook events for comedy night at the firehouse and, um, you know, the local cover bands playing. Somebody it, just so. found it. Eh. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, that was me. It's, it's Danny quote C quote. Yes. What? <laughs> the C is in quotes? Just yeah, the C? Just the C. It's the even more confusing version of that name. <laughs> but it's not um, Danny comedy. It's just Danny C. Yeah. Maybe the C is for comedy, though. <laughs> I imagine that it's probably short for like Calabrese or Caliche or. Um... Is Caliche a real last name? That sounds fun. Yeah, I think so, right? Caliche, Calicio, Danny Chuckles. Yeah, that's probably it. Oi, oi. See, I'm sorry. Know. That would make me sad. Yeah. That, that, that would make me very sad. There was, when I first started doing comedy, I would do more like, like random stuff at places like that. Mm -hmm. Um, like in, you know, Northern New Jersey and the lower Hudson Valley. And, um, there was a guy that would, that was like part of that scene and I would never see him in Manhattan or Brooklyn ever, but I would uh -huh. see him at like these type of like restaurants in Halden, New Jersey or whatever. And he went by the stage name, Johnny Hollywood. So... Mm -hmm. I don't know if Danny C is short for Danny Chuckles. Yeah, 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 yeah. That hurts my soul. Possible. Danny's Entertainment. <laughs> Danny Cabatappy. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. 
Daniel. Nice. What are we listening to? Oh, you know, just some classic background music composed by Jonah Moorer. Oh. But you know what? I, I didn't ask you here, Kanise, to tell you about <laughs> Danny C. I, I want to hear about Don't Kill Yourself Yet, the hottest ticket in town. I hope it is the hottest ticket in town. That would nothing would make me happier. I mean, maybe World Peace would, but yes, that'd be good. Honestly, that's abstract. And the joy of this show being the hottest ticket in town is more concrete. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a one-person show. It is about being depressed and then trying not to want to kill myself, and then my body wanting to kill me anyway. So, mm. yeah. Oh, that's it. That's me, and you can get a ticket. And so, someone who you all know, Chris Gethard, is on it. Very He's nice. gonna be there. And Marsha Belsky, who you might know, but I don't know your life, mm -hmm. she's gonna be there too. So January 30th. Yeah. Very nice. At Littlefield, which is a fun venue that is connected to a restaurant that has food that's pretty good. I've actually, I never used to eat there, and then I kept getting hungry and was like, I'll do it. I will buy the nachos. And I've bought nachos and plantains and tacos there. And I've enjoyed all of it. Also, bring it to L.A., please. Only if you'll promise to buy a ticket. Because mm -hmm. I can't go unless I sell tickets. They won't let you. They ask you at the airport, have you sold tickets? And if you haven't, you're not allowed to go to Los Angeles. That's true. Yeah. I like you, these. You had a stroke, right? Yes. Like when your body that is my body tried to kill me. Yes. How long uh, ago was that now? That is now um, a year and almost a year and a half. Uh, and That's it feels crazy. really weird to say, but also like, oh, wow, that is a thing that happened. And I'm really happy that I've been able to live uh, this past year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Are you still having symptoms? Yeah, I lost the feeling in half of my body Jesus or like the Christ. skin. Um, so it's like, and it's so weird how it's like directly down the center of my body. Yeah. But it feels like on the right side that I'm wearing almost like a weird like suit of rubber or something. Because it, if you like push on my skin, I feel that. But if like an ant were crawling on my skin, I probably wouldn't feel that. What the hell? Yeah, and then, it, like, I lost vision in my right eye, and that's back, but it does take me a little bit longer to read now, which is annoying because I used to pride myself on being a fast reader, and now I'm, like, a regular speed reader, yeah. And but it's disappointing to me because I know what fast is like. I've tasted the glory of it, and now I don't have it. So, yeah, my show is about that and, you know, ways of trying to live, so... Please come. Bodies are weird. Yes, they are. It's honestly disgusting that we possess physical form. And my next solo show will be about the um, indignity of physically being on this planet and needing food and things to survive. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I someone was near them. when I was in Toronto. But come back sometime. Oh, okay. I I was there shooting a commercial that has never aired. And Love that. <laughs> they paid me to be there, and I got to stay in a hotel in Toronto Good. for a week. But I don't know if anything ever came of that. So, yay. Toronto was nice for that one week that I was there, oddly. And, yes, I will come back someday. I, I will buy all the tickets. Airs. Don't do that, Alice. You can't afford all the tickets. That just doesn't make sense financially. But I'd love it if, if you bought some <laughs> tickets. That would be nice because it would make my manager believe in me more because mm -hmm. now I think she's on the fence. Oh, God. <laughs> she's like, I don't know. I represent her, but I'm mm -hmm. not really sure if this is a thing, this Kenise Mobley business. Well, that's no good. Yeah. Uh, One day I'll show them. I'll show them all that the Kenise Mobley business is a good investment. Yeah, I think it is. Thank you very much. So, yeah, that's what my show is about. But also, I have people that I like opening, and I think it's going to be a fun time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it would be cool if you could come. But if not, just, like, 
tell someone you know who lives in New York or, um, you know, I don't know, uh, tell me to come to your city like some of you are doing now. That's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel nice at the very least. What is the nicest thing a fan has ever done that made you say, wow, that makes me feel really nice? Oh, my God. Um, I guess the first thing that comes to mind was someone DM'd me and they said that they were in the hospital and that them and their friend or their sibling or whatever, they were watching my vids and hooting and hollering and... That made me feel quite good. That's lovely. It's like, that's better than just, that's better than someone not in the hospital hooting and hollering. Yeah. I, I actually lifted this person's spirits in a time that they needed it. And... Hooting and hollering? Great mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. One rarely hears of the hooting yeah. without the hollering, so... Or... Come to D.C., please. I would love to come to D.C. I have a relative in Baltimore that I visit often, so I love the area. Yum, yum, crab cakes and sweaty summers. Was there a thing that someone said to you oh. that made you jump yes. into joy? Mm -hmm. Yes, so I have been doing stroke material since relatively soon after my stroke and mm -hmm. someone came up to me and it was a young guy and he was like, I also had a stroke and it's weird because you're young and nobody expects it and also mm -hmm. that you don't look like you had a stroke and I don't know what people mean when they say that, but they right. often say that I don't look like I've had a stroke mm -hmm. and it's a weird sensation and I appreciate that you're talking about that. And so it made me feel really nice. Like, hey, there are lots yeah. of people. And somebody wrote me because they had been at a show, but they were like, oh, I couldn't catch you afterwards. But I was in the audience and I had a stroke similarly when I was traveling. And it mm. was so weird that there's just this chunk of my life that's strange now, but isn't visible to other people. Right. Yeah. So those are probably the nicest things. I want someone to, like, say that I made them want to go back to school or leave their deadbeat husband, but sure, I've got yeah. time. Mm -hmm. I'm not quitting yet, so maybe maybe someone will say that to me. I would imagine that having a stroke, like, probably a lot of people, it's like, wow, this is such a weird thing to go through, but... Mm. Like, I feel like sometimes if you talk about anything too much, people are like, okay, we get it. Yeah. And it's like you go through, like, this traumatic, crazy health scare, and then you're kind of, like, need to process it, but you're also like, I guess I don't want to bug people. Yeah. And so maybe people are carrying that. And then seeing someone be like, no, I'm going to talk about it for an hour and make it fun. <laughs> that, that's probably, probably pretty satisfying. It makes me feel better. So right? you have a cute dog, Mary. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess. <laughs> I, oh, I like that you're moving the camera. Oh, man. Hello. Hello. It's like the dog knows it's on camera and it's posing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I trained him. Nice. He's camera ready. Mm -hmm. Ready to be a star. He's chilling. Happy looks so cozy. Cozy. On a cute little blanket bed. I don't know. We also got so we also got some viewer art. 
Come on, from let me Butt's see. genitals. Butt's genitals? Yeah, with this jellyfish on a beach. Okay. Hell yeah. Plausible deniability. I totally agree. Pets are good at maximizing coziness. Um, Anastasia or Anastasia asks, Kenise, have you heard the song Strokin by Clarence Carter? No, I haven't. What's it about? Is it about masturbating or having a stroke? That's what I want to know. Because if you just told me there's a song called Stroking, I'd be like, like, Stroking one out. But maybe that's because I have a, a brain that's dirty. The former, okay. Well, what, what does this character have to say about it? Hopefully yeah, he's on, anti. He's like against strokes. Hopefully it's not a pro-stroke song, but sometimes I think about that. I think, wait, are my enemies on the side of the stroke? <gasps> Are there oh people God. who are pro stroke? Do you have, do you ever think you don't? Okay, that, then that's just my paranoid brain. Okay. No, I get it. I would think the same. Sometimes I worry. I'm like somebody's rooting for this stroke. Somebody's right. disappointed that it didn't take me out. Mm -hmm. Butts has a clarification. Can he one stroke zero? Yes. Wait, butts is uh, a clarification. No, 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 it's about masturbating. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Alice says, Kenise, you should start dating a stroke. Julian Casablancas. Is he cool or is he a douche? I don't know. Probably douche. I've heard he's like a rich kid. Like his his dad's yeah. a, a he's a Nepo baby. He was a Nepo baby before the Nepo baby conversation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He wants a Nepo baby. I, my understanding is he might be okay, but he's also an alcoholic. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, as a non-drinker, I can't drink because of the medications I'm on. I would have a difficult time with an alcoholic because I could yeah. not join in on the fun. And just today, I asked someone, they were like, ooh, I've got this rosé, it's very good, da 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 And I was like, can I smell it? And they were like, what? And I was like, <laughs> I can't have it, but I'd like to know mm -hmm. what it's about. So I've been smelling people's drinks. And sorry if I've weirded you out by asking to smell your drink. I didn't mean it in a weird way. I just meant it in a, I'd like to fantasize about a past when I consume that way. Hey, we get it. You can smell our drinks. Thank you. What about a stroke of genius? I would love to have one. We mm -hmm. shall see. Uh, one person who had a stroke of genius is Slappy Phil, who sent oh. in this viewer art. Oh my Ooh. goodness! That is wow. So the wow. the shells over the boobs are holding themselves up because the boobs are bigger than the shells. Great cleavage, great fantasy hair color. Um, yeah. Ten out of ten. No, eleven out of ten. Wow. Lots of each. Pretty cool. I Man, think I might have one person show fever. Mm -hmm. One person show fever? Yeah, I saw a pretty good one over the weekend. Oh. And now I'm like, I want to see everyone's one person show. What was the good one you saw over the weekend? I saw, what was it, what do you call it? After crime, before comedy, is that what it's called? Oh, yeah, PD Diabreu. And it was so good. I felt moved. I felt moved and inspired while That's also what laughing. We're, we're trying to do move and right? inspire people. Hopefully, people are moved and inspired. Yeah. Have you seen any that you don't have to name them, of course, but have you seen any that you're like, this is absolutely not moving? And you know what? I question why you thought to do this. Mm, let me think. What's weird is that I feel instinctually that I have, but I'm like, <laughs> I can't even think of one. So I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like, 
have I seen one or is that anti one person show bias that I've <laughs> absorbed from um, you know, the culture that I live in? The culture is, I mean, and honestly, given how many there are, you it's would assume overwhelming. there's some filler. You would assume. Yeah. I, I, even as I made one, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm just making one now because this is when something happened to me. Right. But some of these people, you're like, what? What? Yeah. Did something happened to all of us just now? I mean, we all did just live through the mm -hmm. pandemic, so maybe. That's but. True. But yeah, I guess to you know, I hate I hate to be a hater. I honestly do. But sometimes you read these descriptions and you're like, really? <laughs> really? You think uh, people want to go go watch that? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm, I'm sure plenty of things that I've made that I think are good. People would be like, what? How <laughs> would you do that? Yeah. I don't That's get it. <laughs> I get that. I, I would like to enter more things in my life with the understanding that, yeah, uh, some people have reacted similarly to me, mm -hmm. and that is okay. Yeah. That we are all doing our best trying to communicate who we are to a world that can often feel indifferent. But we're all trying. I have to complain about something. Uh oh. I listen to self help audiobooks. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's true. It's true. And, you know, I, I checked out this one recently because I liked the name. I said, ooh, that sounds, that sounds like that's going to have some good stuff in it. Yeah. Um, it's called The Courage to be Disliked. Ooh. Have you heard of it? I haven't, but what, did it have good stuff in it? It had some good stuff in it. Um... Pretty much summarized in the title. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? All right. Um, You're like, I didn't need to buy this. I didn't need to read this. Or did you get it from the library, you said? No, I got it um, as one of my Audible credits. Oh, nice. And... Um, you yeah. would have read or kept that credit? No, no. I, I think there is some good stuff in there. Okay. Um, basically just about, like, I mean, I feel silly summarizing it because it is so, like, duh, we know this. But I guess that's the thing of self-help books is just, like, it is telling you stuff that you basically know. But, like, the yeah. repetition of listening or reading to it is almost like doing affirmations in the mirror. Um, and, yeah, so just, like, People in life are gonna not get you. They're yeah. going to misinterpret you, and that's gonna happen. So don't um, preemptively, you know, act a certain way and right. hope that people will like you or um, change something in. Um, in your art making because oh i think people will like this more than that right um yeah so just go into things more with the mindset of like oh i bet people will probably dislike this and mm -hmm. that's like okay that's not really that's, my business yeah right? but you're making it not for them it's true it's, it's, it's true. for you hmm this book, everything is in black and white, but I think I need a splash of color. So I'm going go to go to my other pile of magazines to nice. get some color. All right. You're going to just see me walk towards the background. One second. Nice. Let's see what's up in the comments. Oh, okay. Anastasia will queue up your work. Forest degrees on the state of self help books. Hello. Hello. 
I'm really curious to see. Well, wait for it. It's not, it needs the color or else it doesn't make any sense. You need a second unit. Oh, sorry guys. I only have one camera and it's the one pointed at my face. So I guess, wah, wah, you're gonna have to look at my face for a second. Woe is you. Oh, poor baby. Alice says, mermaid nipples are basically double-sided tape in regards to the nipple shells. Of fair, 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 fair. Outside of that context would be confusing, but with that context, yes. makes a lot of sense. Plausible deniability says, put that on a shirt. Oof. Sloppy Phil says, thank you. Oh, wow. What a gorgeous beach background. Yeah. So in Cancun, the beaches look comical because the water is so blue. You're like, what do you guys do into this? But it's just right. how it naturally is. Wow. That's what my lake is like at my house. It's insanely blue green because they put yes. chemicals in it. Oh, Yes. <laughs> what do the chemicals do? It looks cool. Yeah. I think it's uh, it's part of the chlorine whatever mixture that makes it safe to swim in. Oh, okay. And, but there's also fish and stuff. So I guess it like reduces algae. Mm. Um, so I guess... I guess you can get it in normal color and you can get it in like dark color and you can get it in blue green color and blue mm. green is what my HOA has decided on. Nice. It looks pretty cool. Most of my magazines that I've ordered over the years are food magazines. So now I'm like, I guess this is going to have a weird food component because mm. my magazines are or food based. But I do have an L with Dua Lipa on it, so we're gonna see if that has any if that yields any fruits. I'm looking at this food magazine and I'm like, damn, I, I could eat. Damn. Right? Some of this stuff looks pretty tasty. Like, well, I, this isn't me, this is this is like a weird a dish that they keep telling me to maybe make or something. I will die by 90s magazines with prom dances. Where do you where do you buy them? Yeah, dish Alice. Yeah. Cause I went to my library eBay. Keeping. Yeah. I went to my library and I was like, what do you guys do with the magazines when you're done with them? And they were like, We can't give them to you. And I was like, what do you do with them then? And they're like, we've had too many people come in here and ask. So it's in the systems is too complicated. So we throw them away. And I was like, you make it so that because some people want it, no people can have it. Just good magazines all just going into the trash because you guys haven't figured out a system for this. That seems that seems wrong. That is wrong. I'm pissed. Well, that's the Brooklyn Public Library Central Branch's answers to me. And, well, I think they should have, yeah, they should have a secret box for me. Or someone, or like, I could make friends with a librarian and then get them. But, yeah. I don't know about these donut boxes, but... I'll tell everyone until the cows come home, use Too Good To Go, the app that allows you oh, yeah. to get restaurants food at the end of the day stuff that would otherwise end up in a dumpster so use it because you would get like cheap pizza and pastry and tons of bagels I and grocery so stores are on it there. yeah mm -hmm. so give it a shot it's a good app and it is in lots of cities so if you get it in whatever city you're in and you visit another city they've got too good to go as well usually i mean depending on what city you go to 
I took a pic of um, what I ate today. You guys want to check this out? I do. Yeah. What is yeah. it? They're little cookies. Ooh. They're little cookies with caramel filling. Oh, I thought that would be a fruit-based thing, but caramel's nice as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had two of them. Yup. The room what was the true. texture of the cookie? Was it like a shortbread cookie? Yeah, kind of like a shortbread. Okay. It a little bit softer. Okay. Almost cake-like? Or was it hard? Yeah, crunchy? a little more cakey. Okay. Are they Colombian? They are. They are. Whoa! Mm -hmm. I would like to get on that level of cookie identification. Where I can be like, that's a Colombian cookie. That's an Italian cookie. That's a Spanish cookie. Right? I've also had, I've had the same cookie from an Ecuadorian bakery, but that one didn't have powdered sugar on top. So, I don't know if that's, if that's the Colombian detail, but mm. the ones I got today were from a Colombian bakery. Mm. This fashion mag has so many perfume ads, it is smelling up the joint. You know, I have such a strong memory that just flooded my senses. Um, that when I was a girl, I would sit on the couch and my dad would sit in the chair and he would... Um, flip through the magazines he got in the mail and he would rip out like before reading the magazine he would go through the whole magazine and rip out um, perfume ads uh, business reply mail um, like any sort of like thicker cardboard cardstock type pages within the magazine right so that he could then have a nice floppy magazine experience okay I like that curation of one's experience just to make mm -hmm. it, this is what I want. I know that this is what I want. This is what mm -hmm. I shall have. And I sit there and I listen to the That seems very satisfying. A mm -hmm. little bit. Not bad. I think I need like an architectural digest or something. Mm. Hmm. Or to befriend one of these librarians and get right? the drop on all these trash magazines. It seems wild that beautiful images from publications that I would never actually subscribe to because they're so specific are just going to waste. When I, I could use that them. one thrift store has um what's that one called i think it's on driggs in williamsburg mm. and like they got they always got chairs in front okay driggs, thrift store they got like clothes and furniture mm. and i think i've gotten photos or some sort of paper material okay. there I'll check it out. Now, what's that place called? Do you do any of you? Looking at Google Maps, there's a place called Mother of Junk. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Someone's warning me, warning me about hoarderdom. I won't because my mother never throws things away. And I, when I visit her, we always go through, or in the last few years, every time I visit her, we go through a closet or a room and throw everything away and I'm the person who makes her do this and I make myself do this it's part of the reason why if I don't wear something for a year it has to go into a bag that mm -hmm. bag goes to a clothing swap I do not keep things um I won't I have these magazines because I had a New Year's Day um collaging party yeah mm -hmm. that's pleasant yeah I made lots of tea there were lots of cookies veggies and snacks 
no alcohol, and it was just New Year's Day. Let's make, like, not resolutions, but let's set some goals. Let's set some intentions. Let's make some vision boards. I love that. I've never made a vision board, but I think I've wanted to. Maybe I'll make a vision board on a vision board. So that one yeah. day I make a vision board. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. seems like a reasonable series of events. Mm -hmm. hmm. There must be something in this magazine that's not. Do I want to go color or pattern? Sounds fun, my dad. Ah, it is a concern, but I think the fact that you have the concern hopefully means that you'll do something about it instead of just saying, well, alas, I'll be a hoarder absolutely, and there's nothing anyone can do about it. But you can do something about it. Yeah, I bet you won't become one. Yeah, let's hope not. And honestly, part of me, and maybe this is unkind and I hope it's not, thinks that that is also dealing with some A, Great Depression stuff, but B, the constant collection of material nonsense of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and 80s, like the, and 90s, the, the impulse to collect a lot of things that you need, single use items, all of these things, feels very combined with the growth of advertising and like collecting of physical things. But someone tell me that I'm wrong and show me an instance of someone hoarding in 3000 BC Mesopotamia or something. I think um, like some of the instinct, right, is like, I can't get rid of this. I might need it one yeah. time. But I'd also imagine maybe it could start like innocently with like, a, oh, I could sell this one day. And I feel like a lot of stuff. Um, 10, 20, 30 years ago, people thought, ooh, you could make a lot of money with this one day. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's turned out to not be true. That's why someone has like 18 NASCAR collector cups from McDonald's. Exactly, yes. Because one day, these will be worth something. But mm -hmm. that one day will never come. Right, it's like, why would this be worth something? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Periodically get rid of some of it. Yes, that is important to say, today is the day I'm clearing out some stuff. And it doesn't have to be all at once, but if you do a little all the time, then you shouldn't be collecting so much that you no longer know what your walls look like and have to just swear off entire bedrooms because you no longer can get into that room. Right. That's a fear. I would assume single walk run that maybe you don't have it. I don't know, maybe you're predisposed to it knock on wood fingers crossed yeah hope you don't become a hoarder but um i would think that if you were you probably wouldn't be saying stuff like oh i hope i don't become like that i bet you'd already be in like a, a denial i'm not like that thing. everything yeah. i have is reasonable it makes sense yeah. that i have uh, 83 ketchup packets because I'm going to need ketchup and I can't just buy a bottle. And I mean, I have a bottle, but this could be useful if guests come over. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I don't think you'd be saying 
Oh gosh, I'm a little bit concerned uh, about uh, maybe becoming a hoarder one day. You'd say, I'm so not a hoarder, I'm never yeah. going to be a hoarder. Exactly. I don't know. My parents always used to keep boxes for things. Computers, vacuums, TVs, etc. In case they had to return it or something, question mark. But then they would keep the boxes way after the things that they were from were this gone. This is... Get rid of it. When they finally moved, my brother and I got them to get rid of everything, though. That's good. That's nice of you. Great I think we've got to bully our parents into not of being course. hoarders. <laughs> oh, the sad stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, bully your parents. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I bully my mom, and I think it's made her less of a hoarder. So... Mm -hmm. I say, not be mean to old people, but yell at them that they have to change. Yeah, be a straight shooter. And one time, mm -hmm. no, no, that one time doesn't. It's not worth it. That one time, stop it. Mm -hmm. Be mean to old people. Yes. Honestly, mm -hmm. they got to live through some of the most profitable and most advantageous times in our country's history. And now we don't have stuff. So you guys had stuff. So shut up. That's my opinion on that. I think it's fair to keep lots of stuff if you use lots of stuff or are maintaining a studio or something. But it has to be organized and purposeful. Yes. Totes. Not just a maybe one day. Mm -hmm. This could be maybe possibly. No. Shut, 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 shut up. Yeah. All right. What is this even? How does this open? An example of those things people keep being useful is this viewer art from Potatoes Molasses. It's wow! Like Self-portrait from magazine scraps. Oh, that's lovely. That's really cool. That's quite cool. Whoa. Okay. That's cool art. Alert. Sorry, but cool alert. <laughs> yeah, people are impressed. Do you have plans, Kenise, to take your show to other places, or more uh, just tentatively you would like to go to other places? I think it's a little bit more tentative. So I've been able to do it in Boston, and that was really cool. Mm -hmm. And I did get to do it in Toronto when I was there for this commercial mm -hmm. um, that I'll never see and hope isn't actually being used <laughs> in some nefarious way. Mm -hmm. um, but I would like to do it up and down the East Coast because mm -hmm. I have places to stay up and down the East Coast and mm -hmm. probably in LA because I have a place to stay in LA, but I don't have a place to stay in San Francisco, but I think I could figure it out based yeah. on my past as a couch surfer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You could stay with Forrest. Sorry, Forrest, to volunteer your <laughs> Forrest, don't you live with your person? Yeah. A person? Yes. Mm. And we used to have a lot more room, but we moved mm. to a smaller spot. But you I appreciate to... that, but you, you don't have to let me, someone who you have never spent time with physically, do that. <laughs> there's I mean, there's you're absolutely no pr I appreciate that, but you're there's absolutely no pressure to do that. I'm I'm pretty sure Mary said that you could though. I mean, Mary <laughs> Mary was yeah, very clear. I said, <laughs> I mean, I think I'm a pretty nice house guest. So, like, I clean up after myself, and I'm fairly self-sufficient. But, warning, my family mentioned this several times during the vacation. I snore, and apparently mm. they all find it annoying. No. Yes, and they make me sometimes sleep in the living room because oh, they're like, God. you can't share a bedroom with someone because they won't be able to sleep with your damn snoring. Oh, my God. 
And I bought those Breathe Right strips, and they didn't do anything. So no, they just hurt my nose when I used. Yeah. Them. Mm -hmm. I bought those and I realized that I had a deviated septum, so then I had to get surgery. But now I can. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I that you had a deviated I septum. Mm -hmm. I don't think I did. You. Well, this, I was about to be like, well, did you do a lot of cocaine? How did that happen? But that's that's a personal thing. No, I think I hit myself in the head too many times with my iPad while laying in bed. Oh. Why did you do that? I mean, accidentally, I hope. Yeah, yeah, it's the thing where you're like reading with it above your head, and then you're tired and you drop it. Oh, okay. I'm also kidding. I don't actually think that's why I had it. I think I just okay. had it forever. But. I was genuinely concerned, but okay. I'll stop being genuinely concerned then. I do use a CPAP machine, which is for snoring, though, and that's been great. I've heard good things about this. Can you travel with it? Do you have a travel size one, or is it just like the big contraption? It's It's not that big. What I did was I went and I illegally bought a second one on eBay because sometimes they come up on eBay. Oh. Uh, because because they need a prescription. Or someone died. Okay. Maybe or someone or someone got it from their insurance and then sold it for the money. Ah, wow. Okay. But um, yeah, traveling with it's actually very easy. Okay, good. It's the 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 case I travel with is like the size of two laptops basically. Oh, that's not too large. Yeah, and you're and you're technically allowed to make uh, to take it on planes as a third carry-on item because it's a um, because it's a medical device. device. Nice. Fox says that they do make travel ones. That is also true. Valerie also endorsing the CPAP. Wow. All right. But yeah, this is a CPAP, CPAP crowd. I've been told I snore. I don't think I do it all the time, so I don't know what triggers it. Mm. A man sounded very disappointed when he told me that I snored once, and oh. then we stopped seeing each other. So I think oh. my snoring is causing costing me relationships, but oh. there were lots of issues with that guy anyway, yeah. so. This music is calming as hell. I like it. Mm -hmm. I used to date a guy who, when I snore, he'd wake me up. He'd what? Me up. Yep. He said, you're snoring. Well, that, but I need to sleep, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's going to make it so I can't sleep, though. It was not good. Boo that man. Boo him. Yeah. But my current partner, I said, do, do I snore? bad do i snore loud he says no oh he says no you don't do it all the time and when you do it it's not even like it's not even like that it's just regular snoring nice so he's a good boy that's good single walk run with yelling in his sleep, allegedly. Oh. Mm. Yelling. Oh my goodness. Is it like night terrors? Yeah, what's that about? Single walk run also made this great viewer art. <gasps> oh. Wow. I want to get into um, sandcastle making. Are you, do you have a pass with sculpting? Not really, but I feel like I could do it. I believe in you. It does look fun. Yeah, I feel like I see pics or vids of it and I'm like, oh my God, why haven't I been this doing is... this? I just think of times I've been to the beach and I'm just like lying on a towel and looking at stuff. Mm -hmm. I could have been building castles this that whole time. time. But you know, that's 
That's my resolution for this year. More sand castles. More sand castles. Mm -hmm. What beaches do you like going to? Um, I like to go to the Jersey Shore. I like Asbury Park. I like um, Monmouth. I like oh, what's that other one? Mm, what's that one next to Asbury where all the houses look cool? And I think it might be Christian there. Mm. I've never been to Asbury Park, but oh, that sounds that cool. Lovely. I like Coney Island. I love the boardwalk, let's face it. Okay. I always feel like maybe I'm too old or square there. I like it, really? but I'm like, oh, I'm 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 gonna wear all of my clothes right now. Mm. Yeah, that's square as hell. I'm I know I'm square. No, I'm no. I'm a fuddy duddy. No. I want other people to have fun. But I'm just like, oh no, I, I'm covered up, please. I think whatever makes you comfy is good. Thank you. It's hip to be square. Mm -hmm. Whose song is that? Boy. Hmm. I'm not finding things that I'm loving, and my collage at present is quite simplistic. Oh, excuse me. Come on, let's 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 get an angle. Let's get an angle of that collage. It's what are you it's this right oh. now. Oh, there's cool. a beach, and there's colors, and I want to put something in the sky that's red above it. But yeah, there's, that's what it is right now. That so, yeah. rocks. I'm deciding what would be coming from the sky. Mm -hmm. He would listen to the news. Thank you. Hip to be there. Let's see. Been, been chipping away at this little eye. Ooh. I like the detail here. What a good eye. That little white dot. Solid. Right? Nice and shiny. That's a nice turret. Well, it's almost bedtime, but I think there's enough time to play a little game. Ooh. I hope you're hungry. For dinner. Wait, no, not that game. Not that game. Oh, not, not that game. Not that game. Not that game. I ate, I ate cookies. Remember? Yeah. 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 So, but okay. you mean the gamers den. What's up, gamers? What's up, game mets? Welcome to Mary Houlihan's Painting Party Presents The Gamer's Den. We are about to play an awesome sauce game. Um, this game was just leaked. Uh, we got an, a leaked copy um, of this awesome game. Uh, it was made in conjunction with Konami, in conjunction with EA Sports, in conjunction with Sonic the Hedgehog. Um... Okay, let's check it out. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wow. 
Welcome to Trivial Pursuits Daily Challenge. Sharpen your mind. And then, okay, you get six questions. 15 seconds to answer each question. So think fast. Okay. Uh, okay, try to get all six correct. All right, let's do this. Olivia Newton-John played a roller skating muse. Uh, Xanadu. Yeah. Xanadu. What two lane road from Chicago to LA to, to get your kicks? 66! 66! <gasps> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing the time go by, really. I know. In which winter sport does a person ride a slide down a frozen track? Luge. Luge. Face down? Face down. Is that skeleton face down? Oh my God, Forrest. Forrest, I would have never known that. I would have never known that. Why is the skeleton face down? I don't know. Okay, in 2011, what surgical full transplant was performed for the first time? Face? Face? face. I think I saw that on Instagram Ooh. or whatever we were using in 2011. What Norse god is commemorated in the name of Thur I think it's Thor, right? Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Makes sense. Thursday, Thursday. yeah. Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tale, the, the Snow Queen, inspired what Frozen. Disney film? Frozen. Frozen? <gasps> yeah. <gasps> <gasps> We're the smartest person in the world! <laughs> <You> did it! <laughs> wow. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Woo! Uh. Thorsty Thursday. Clap, clap, yeah. clap, 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 clap. Nice. I feel like we accomplished something. I think so. Forrest? Yes, Mary? Uh, I agree, Slappy Phil. We should all go out to a bar as a trivia team, literally. I love trivia, so let me know. Oh, that'd be fun. Konami? X E A Sports X Song the Hedgehog presents Mary Houlihan's Gamers Den colon trivial pursuit <laughs> <colon>, daily challenge. <laughs> Forrest, is there any more viewer art? I think we've looked at all the viewer art. Well then, frankly, I think it's time for bed. That's fair. Kenise, will you remind us again where and when your show Don't Kill Yourself Yet is um, where and when it is? Absolutely. So if you are in the New York area, you should come to Littlefield on January 30th, 8 o'clock to see Don't Kill Yourself Yet, a comedy about depression. And it will have Chris Gethard, friend of the show. It will have Marsha Belsky, very funny person, and me. And we'll all be having a nice time together. So you should come. Tickets, they, they, they've linked it. They've linked it for you so it's so easy. Um, and, or you can just go to my socials on Kinese Mobley on all the platforms. Okay, that's that's it. Yay! Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for doing it. It's always a pleasure. Likewise. I hope I see you around more. And then that yeah. movie we shot last year finally comes out so I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Guys, we shot a movie together and it was cool. It was cool. Well, good night, everybody. Night.